Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley. This is another video of a Staffordshire church. This is the church of St. Lawrence Gnosol. Pronounced Gnosol, but uh, one likes to give these silent letters their due. It's, as you can see, a very big building. It's one of Staffordshire's big churches. It's one of the ones that actually gets a mention a write up in a number of books on historic churches. And as you can see behind me, it has Norman origins. You see this big Norman arch. I believe at one point it was a collegiate church. That is to say, it's a church that was served by a staff of canons who not only served the building, but they lived together, not under a monastic rule, but nevertheless, they had a communal life. So as we look around here, we'll see some of the features from the various alterations, enlargements this building is known, and some of the changes. It's, well, it's one of the buildings where actually some of the stone on the inside was supposed to be seen. So, as you can see, it's a nice big light building. Let's have a look around. We start at the West End. St. Lawrence is uh, cruciform, that is to say it's cross-shaped. This is actually it's a relatively unusual shape for a church just because it's quite a complicated shape and you need quite a lot of money to uh, build it, a lot of effort. So there's a central crossing tower, which is Norman. You can see there that lovely Norman arch, beautifully carved. Uh, 11th, 12th century, perhaps. And as we move around here, we have the font. Now, the font is this great, chunk of alabaster Victorian of course but because alabaster is translucent it, it looks really impressive in the sunlight it sort of glows as it were um, a list there of former former erectors ministers etc and one of them mentions a number of prebendaries now a prebendary of course a Prebend was a, a living that connected with a cathedral. So here you had these uh, prebends up until like, the 16th century, and then you have a number of curates serve for the, the uh, prebend. We go to that would be a, a water stoop by the door, and looking up here, the south aisle. Again, you can see a window up there, it's Norman window, so that tells us that that's the Norman transept there. And this then has been pierced at some point, because all of these arcades look to be 14th century stone pulpit. This is one of those few churches where you get away with a stone pulpit, because it's a big, um, very big church. Um, so Norman transept, that they then put this 14th century door through. Um, that looks to me like the old font that would be the Georgian font and on that base but it's obviously it's now used as to keep flowers in because they've got that nice alabaster well, actually it's quite a pleasant alabaster font um, one of the things about these big churches of course is as originally built they're built to have all these side chapels in the transepts and etc and then at the reformation all these side chapels are abolished so the buildings actually become fairly formless in terms of what you do with this stuff, what you do with these spaces. And one of the things they did was they would start schools in them, but also you get these funny vestries that crop up here and there. Here we are under the crossing, and you can see you've got this big organ at the other side, and Norman arches on all four sides, of course. We're just back up here to the end of the transept, and you can see here you've got this nice Norman arch up there, and the floor and I suspect, well, bells would have to be rung up there, wouldn't they? Yeah. And here we have some Norman carving. That's really good, actually, this. Here you can see that there would have been a black, blank arcading here, and this blank arcading has then been pierced by this doorway, which has then abolished the blank arcading, and we've just got some bits and pieces left. And they may very well have been blank arcading on the other side, but that's all been completely taken away, completely destroyed by putting this, you can see also you've got this frieze up there. And there's a, over there, that's a bit of post-Reformation wall painting, perhaps 17th century by the style. And, uh, yes. 
So up we go into now this is the the south chapel this would be the lady chapel and given the size of it probably it would have been a guild chapel before the reformation that is to say it would have belonged to a guild and the guilds were made up of groups of people who banded together to pay to have masses said for them and as you can see we've got this wonderful medieval sculpture here this effigy of a knight and this is sir william Bannister, who was knighted by King Edward III at the Siege of Calais in 1347, and is said to have been damaged during the English Civil Wars. And we have here this rather little effigy of a child. Hard to tell, male or female, given the state of damage, but there we are. Obviously, Victorians come along, and the Victorians go, we have to make it look more like it did in the Middle Ages, and so we have the Lady Chapel is restored and has this Reredos, it's got this stone altar thing. It has a Victorian piscina. Whatever was here, there would have been a screen, obviously, between here and the uh, chancel before the, the Reformation and quite probably afterwards as well. But the screens have been taken away at some point. There's still some marks here that show where it was. That's the beer that was used to transport coffins. You can see there the church chest, which is awfully worm-eaten. And here we can see, at a better distance, the remains of the Norman transept. And you get some idea of what the Norman building would have been like with these uh, little windows and arches. You've got here the, an old roof line. It's all very gorgeous, very interesting. We have here this arch. Is that an Easter sepulchre, I wonder? It's about the right place to be one. Um, and there's not much indication of having been anything else, and there, no, there's no, no indication of a piscina. That probably is an Easter sepulchre. What would happen is that on Good Friday, it's part of the medieval Easter liturgy, on Good Friday, the consecrated host would be, as it were, buried. That the consecrated host of the wafer it would be, as it were, buried in there, and then on Easter Sunday it would be brought out. And it's, of course, the consecrated host is believed to become the, the body, blood, and divinity of Christ. So transubstantiation, all that business. So it's part of a kind of reenacting of the events of Easter. We have here, this is the, the high altar, and we've got a big, big window of all these saints. Um, and this, this is actually, of course, a window of the Te Deum. And looking over into the Lady Chapel, we've got a, what might be called a Popish picture. A little bit of medieval glass up there, but it's all just fragments. You imagine before the Reformation, the walls would here, you can just you can see they've all been scored for plaster. They would have been plastered and then painted with amazing scenes. But the Victorians had this idea, and it's very similar to what you get in terms of people thinking about ancient Greece and Rome, that everything was terror, it was all bare stone. Well, it wasn't. It was all actually terribly painted. Even the, the Normans painted things. But of course, over time, paint wears off and so people see these things as bare stone and they assumed they were. Again these lovely Norman arches you can see they've been plastered on the inside with that just that rough stonework there and they just have left some of it exposed. But the stonework here is generally very good which helps and again the inside of this Norman Norman transept organ is uh, Victorian perhaps even early 20th century case is more kind of um, a good example of the type well, it, it hasn't got a name with it actually ah yes um, Banfield and Son Birmingham um, 1876 yes it's 1870s that's a, what I expect with an organ case like that um, inside the pulpit you can see the top part of the pulpit is alabaster there are some alabaster quarries not very far away so it's local stone but it's Good local stone, looks impressive. And because it's a cruciform church, we have a big east window because the tower is in the middle. In fact, not all cruciform churches have a tower in the middle, but this is the your big type with aisles, and it's the type where you do have this in the middle. You can just see here again, it's, um, it's John 4, 1, 1 John 4, 1, and a little bit of reminder of, after the Reformation, you'd have all these texts painted on the walls. More really good Norman Norman carving up there. And um, yeah, this this is uh, this I think is relatively early, 
watch out on the steps. Don't want to break it myself or the camera, mostly not myself. And again, you've got this alabaster at the top there. Um, the north transept is occupied by the organ, as we can see. But originally, there would have been chapels there. And you've got this wonderful, in fact, you look in here, you see here something of, you've got your south chapel, you've got your transept, and there'd have been chapels in the transepts as well. There'd have been a good number of priests here in the Middle Ages. And now it's a big parish church. We've got these, these tables at the back because the reality is that a building this big, you do not need a building this big for a village. Certainly not at the moment. Um, and so you need, need a bit of flexibility at the back so you can do other things. And you see here now that you've got the... Um, altar underneath the crossing and we're just after Easter so we've got the modern version of an Easter sepulchre we had a little talk we said a little bit about the Easter sepulchre in the chancel but here we've got the modern Easter sepulchre which is underneath this altar or communion table and here we have another thing with the consecrated wafer it's just a matter of Easter Good Friday Easter, Easter garden they they're quite popular in Anglican churches. I, certainly when I was a boy, they were quite quite common. Um, I think less so now. I certainly haven't seen as many now, but you still see them sometimes. And that Norman chancel arch, that Norman tower arch on this side is absolutely amazing. Wonderful stonework. You can see there's a lot of money goes into this building. It's a very, very high status structure. And it still reflects that even after Victorians have done their worst. Well, that's the inside then here. Let's have a look around the outside. Well, here we are outside at Nosal. You can see what I mean about it being a big church on the outside. If I step back, that's the full extent of it. And this great big tower in the middle. Although the bottom part is Norman, you can see it's been built up in the 15th century when this top has been added. In fact, you can see lower down just here the gargoyles now gargoyles are drains on the corners you don't put drains halfway down the tower you put them towards the top of the tower just underneath these the battlements so why are there gargoyles down here well the answer is of course the tower used to be that low and they've just made it higher to make it more impressive so that's that's rather fun isn't it again you have this these clues to the history of the the building on the outside. So as you look around we'll see some interesting things. Obviously this is the south side, it's the, the main entrance side, it's the really grand and posh side. The north side is interesting too. Let's go and have a look around. So as I said the key word for this building is big. You can see why they've put the tower, they've made the tower higher. It's when they put the clear stray on, which is 15th century and see basics of 15th century front we can see although you can see some very definite Norman stonework in that transept and when they put the clerestory on the tower then has been so low that it's been a little bit pathetic and they've said well we need to put a higher tower on to make it more impressive and that's what they've done and on these lovely 15th century towers Victoria didn't like the 15th century very much I I think it's really good because this 15th century architecture it tends to be more about form and engineering rather than um, sticking twiddly bits on. But that's just my opinion. You can see here this Lady Chapel, this looks like it is probably, well certainly the east end has been added actually, you can see there's a, a line underneath that second window and that says originally that chapel only extended that far and they've just added the east end in the 15th century, late 15th century, and so the bit before is earlier and that's going to be in the 14th century. In fact you can see, just see a window outline behind a buttress there which tells us something that again about when it was extended and what they did when they extended it and these big buttresses at the east end the east end's leaning slightly outwards which is i'm sure it's safe you've got these big memorials outside here so this is uh, mary wife of john smith 1856 and these um carvings here. A bit sinister that one, but there we are. Um, 
and around here, this is quite interesting, this is a 14th century chapel that's been added on to the east end of the, or the east side of the transept here. And it's got these little it's gargoyles, it's grotesques. See there where the roof's been cut away and there's now an opening and these gargoyles on the corners. Again saying this is where the roof used to be. The stonework changes as well. More modern, and modernist for that matter, is the, the hall on the north side attached to the north door. Um, depends on your view of modest architecture. There's been a problem with the south transept. Look at those buttresses. Those aren't ornamental buttresses. Those are this transept's about to fall down buttresses. So here we have there's been a problem. Someone has done something with this building or perhaps simply the foundations are in the wrong place here and it started going same is true here of this side chapel and they've had to prop it up with these whacking great buttresses which is always interesting to see where something has gone wrong as they didn't weren't necessarily the best at working out where to put the foundations and all it took was that there's a little bit of soft ground in the wrong place and you lost it but yeah modernism um but these things of course are important we need to have these ancillary facilities halls and such like in a way that in the 19th century uh, just wasn't seen as, as necessary because before the 19th century one suspects that the transept and the lady chapel they would have been used for the as uh, um ancillary functions you can see there that the school it's very common to find the school and the church in english particularly as in a lot of these villages, the church and the school are closely related. It's a church school. So, here we are down. And here's the West End. Now, definite Norman stonework here, but all the Norman decoration has been taken away and replaced. These lancets, these, these would be the original, original aisle lancets, and they would be the 13th century, I suppose. So, I mean, indeed that, of course, is 13th century. So it may be that this extended west was in the 13th century. You can very much see their original roof line. So it's quite interesting to look at the roof lines. Because, again, these buildings have changed and adapted over time. And they continue to do so. The 19th century, you have this idea of trying to, to bring everything into a unity. Well, there isn't a unity here. This isn't a, a building with a unity. This is a building that has a wonderful diversity. It's originally Norman, and it is then rebuilt and added to the Norman core. That great tower is extended upwards, and that's through really the essence of these big medieval churches. Even the little ones, as we saw with what I think will be the, the previous one, as Ellen Hall. Even then, we saw that the tiny little building, and it's uh, been changed and altered over the, the centuries. Well. Here we are then. So there you have it, St Lawrence uh, Nosal. Marvellous example of this, the, the bigger type of medieval church, the, the cruciform, collegiate church, church that uh, has a, a higher status than an ordinary parish church. And you can see how it's maintained this very grand appearance. The original cruciform shape is still apparent but the transepts and Lady Chapel and such like have almost encircled, well, there's not the transepts, like the aisles and Lady Chapel have almost encircled the south transept. The clear story has meant the tower's been heightened. It's a, a marvellous example of see, these big buildings. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed making it, going around this uh, historic church. And may God bless you and keep you until the next time.